I was, and in many ways still am, a very impressionable child. And I have a really absorbent mind and body and soul for sticky moments, especially when they relate to my close encounters with the beauty of nature. I was born and raised in Connecticut in a white house that was surrounded by lawns and woods and fields, and a big, beautiful meadow. And when I was, say, six and seven years old, my favorite thing to do on a sunny summer afternoon was walk down the hill and wander through the waving grasses of that meadow to visit my next door neighbor and beloved friend, Miss Olmsted, who lived in a little tiny white house right in the middle of that meadow. Now, Miss Olmsted lived alone in that house, and she was the oldest person I'd ever met. I mean, she was really, really old. <laughs> I am sure younger than I am now. But <laughs> and I would knock on her door, and she would answer it looking as delighted to see me as I was to see her. And I knew just what she'd be wearing because she always wore exactly the same thing, a white blouse and a long black skirt, a white apron, thick black stockings and sturdy black shoes. And I knew that my friend, Miss Olmsted was a pilgrim because we had been studying the pilgrims in school. We had a big book. And to me, she looked like she'd walked right out of that book. And she'd invite me in, and together we would sit and have tea and cookies in her little front parlor. That little room was so wonderful. And the tea and cookies were so wonderful. And she was so wonderful. And to me, most wonderful of all was that after we'd have tea, she'd take me outside and we would stand together on her little wooden front porch, just looking out at the waving grasses of that meadow in the golden afternoon. And then one afternoon, she showed me something. And then she taught me something that was so amazing, so full of magic that there was a moment when an electric thrill flashed through my entire little body. And I was filled with a wild, reverent joy that I can still feel. I incarnated that moment, so much so that when about two years ago, I first heard Jackson use his beautiful phrase, close encounters of the natural kind, I went right back to that moment. It just came alive again in every cell in my body. So I did what I do at such times I wrote a song about it. And since then, Jackson and I have collaborated so that when I sing the song, he physically interprets it. And when I watch him, that moment, I can feel it. I can see it. It just comes to life for me again. And I want that moment to come to life for you too. So now I'm gonna invite dear Jackson to join me and as I sing the song for you, he'll show you what it felt like to six-year-old me when I had that sticky, precious, close encounter of the natural kind. When I was six and seven on a sunny summer's day, I'd wander through the meadow to a house just down the way. And old Miss Olmsted would invite me in for tea. And then we'd step outside on her little porch, for she had a gift for me. She had a special treasure that she wanted me to find. A close encounter of the natural kind. She'd put a seed right in my palm and I'd hold out my hand and I'd stand so still I'd hardly breathe and I'd wait for what might land. 
a flash of wings, a chickadee would snatch that little seed. And in taking, give me everything that a child could ever need. The most important treasure that a child could ever find. The close encounter of the natural kind. The pecking of a little beak. My chance to understand a tiny little miracle had happened in my hand. As we grow big, do we lose sight of all those little things? The twinkling of the stars at night, or the flash of whirring wings? The pecking of that little beak so sharp against our skin? If we fall out of touch with these, Oh, can we fall back in and taste the joys of everything that nature has designed? These close encounters of the natural kind. May we forever be as children. May we be never blind to these close encounters, these precious close encounters of the natural kind.